welcome back to another video revamp. Today we will be revamping this bad boy. <laughs> hey everybody, I'm Karar and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about how to make Yusuko Platinum. It was short, it was to the point, it got me my first subscribers which is pretty crazy. And most importantly, I was looking actually kind of presentable. <laughs> I got the sweet back hair, I got the jacket, I got the white shirt. <laughs> oh my god. Come on, you guys got to admit, sophomore me was looking kinda, kinda cool, okay? Not anymore. Sadly, not anymore. God dang it. Okay, you know what? Enough fanboying over sophomore me. You guys ready for this? No. Well, too bad. Let's do this. Hello everybody, I'm Car, and today we are going to be talking about some concrete steps to improve your competitive programming skills. And hopefully, we gotta yeet you right up the Yusuko rank. But before we get into the video, make sure to like and subscribe, comment down below if you have any suggestions for what you guys want me to make, you guys have been leaving some very good suggestions in the comments, I appreciate you. Of course, if you guys are interested in the content that I make, we also talk about a lot of this kind of stuff in our Discord, so make sure to join that too, link is in the description. And leave suggestions in the forum, which is also in the description. You guys have not been leaving that many suggestions, so I'm running out of ideas, come on, you guys gotta save me, Cliff, I beg. Also a quick sneak peek into what I'm planning in the future, I'm planning to launch a Patreon soon, and basically I'm gonna be posting exclusive content like live solve and just like my random thoughts on the Patreon, and maybe even do some one-on-one -on -one tutoring with some of the higher tier Patreons if you guys are interested in that kind of thing. And I also get to give you guys the videos that you guys want. I can't like listen to everybody, I can't listen to all 6k subscribers, but if you guys support me on Patreon, I would be very happy to listen to what you guys want. So let me know what you guys think of the idea in the comments, if you guys like it, if you guys don't, and I will be sure to do it if you guys are interested. Alright, tip time, let's do it. Alright, this first step is going to be very controversial because I decided to destroy my previous self and completely switch through the order. The first step is develop your problem solving skills. Now the reason why I made this extremely, extremely, very, very much controversial decision to switch to the 2 is because problem solving skills take way longer to develop. Like honestly speaking, you could probably learn how to code pretty quickly, but developing problem solving skills did not come overnight. Like honestly, I think it took at least three years for my problem solving skills to get to like Isajimo and Yusuko Plat level. And of course, the earlier you start, the better. So now you might be asking, how the heck do I improve my problem solving skills? And for that, I got a very good answer. And no, it's not solve Yusuko problem because those are nasty, dude. Nobody wants to read five paragraph essays about Bethy the Cow. Unless you're doing an argumentative essay on why Bethy the Cow is the best cow in the universe, I would definitely read that. But the point is, Yusuko problems are way too long. They take way too long to solve and way too long to implement. So you're, even though they are helpful, right? You're spending a lot more time to get a lot less problem solving skills in return. For me, the best way to improve my problem solving skills was to do AOPS, Art of Problem Solving. They are my true love, okay? Nothing can displace AOPS from my heart, okay? Nobody. Nobody. Not even Andalou. <laughs> now what's really good about AOPS, especially for me because I really like competitive math, is that they do competitive math, right? And the problems are bite-sized, but they also come with a ton of problem solving skills mushed into one problem. Now what's great about AOPS problems is that no matter what subject you do, right, you can do whatever the heck interests you, whatever motivates you to do the most problems as possible. Like literally just by going through one AOPS book, you get so much better at making observations and getting realizations. Like I know you guys love it when the Yusuko solution on the website is just like, Oh, we make this observation and then it's trivial. And you're like, what? How does that help me? How the heck did you even come to that observation? What are you doing? But the point is, these observations are kind of hard to explain because you just get the intuition to get those observations by doing a ton of problems. There's really no way around it. Alright, so now that you got your very epic problem solving skills, now you can actually learn how to code. And the reason why I put the second is because it's a lot faster than learning how to problem solve. Now you don't want to just learn how to code, okay? Like, yes, you can maybe learn how a for loop works in Java, but you want to be comfortable with it, okay? You can know as much syntax as you want, but it doesn't help if you're not comfortable with the language. So the reason you want to get comfortable with the language, like obviously it's a coding competition, maybe you might want to learn how to code, maybe, just maybe. <laughs> But the main benefit is that it saves you a lot of time during competition, so you can spend more of your time problem solving, right? Like the worst feeling is when you solve a Yusuko problem, and then you start coding it up, and you run out of time, right? Or you make some stupid error in your code, and that's why you get like a 0 out of 333, even though you actually got the solution, right? Like basically you want to put most of the effort in your brain. You don't want to waste time coding, you don't want your limiting factor to be coding. So before you start doing any Yusuko problems, you should make sure that you're very comfortable with the language. And that language has to be C++, that's right! Yusuko likes to pretend that there's like options for what language you could use, they, they put like Java in the dropdown and all that. But no, the only viable option is C++, okay? There's no doubt about it. Now on a serious note, yes, you could use other languages, but first off, Python sucks, right? It's gonna time out for anything past bronze, right? 
And Java really has the same syntax as C++, but it's just more verbose, right? You had to write more code for getting the same result. So just start with C++, right? Save yourself the hassle. You could learn Java later when you actually had to take APCS in high school. Like literally no one cares about that class. Come on, you can learn Java there. But if you start with C++, you're going to be so much faster at coding and you had to spend way less time just like learning stupid Java syntax, okay? So basically how I learned C++ is I basically used this guy, the new Boston's channel, and I basically went through the first 10 videos in his C++ programming tutorial playlist. And it basically goes through all the basics you need to know for you to go, right? For you to go, you do not need to know that much coding. You just had to know the very basics and then most of it is actually going to be problem solving. Like literally after going through this playlist, I had all the knowledge I needed for you to go wrong. Of course though, after you've learned the syntax in those videos, you do need to be comfortable with applying them. So the best way to do it is just to use the language a lot. Now I'm kind of a hypocrite, right? Because I originally started with Java because I thought it was easier or something and my parents thought that I should learn that first. So the way I got better at Java was I used used to go training pages and I just like went through the problem. But now thankfully there are better options like use the go guide. Dude, the people who made use go guide, you guys are crazy. Thank you guys for making that. Like. I honestly think it's way better than using those training pages by like a factor of 200 or something crazy. They literally give you a ton of problems that are from all levels. They tell you what level it is beforehand so you don't have to waste hard use to go problems when you don't even know how to code. And they also give you problems from all other kinds of things so you don't waste that many use to go problems. Now of course if you run out of use to go guide problems somehow, I don't know how you run out of use to go guide problems, but another great option is Hacker Rank. They have a ton of really easy automated submissions and I really like getting points on Hacker Rank so like come on. It's fun, okay? And it's any language you want. And like, it's auto graded. <laughs> I'm repeating myself now, but it's great. Do hacker rank if you don't want to do use to go guide. All right, now that you have learned how to code and you've learned your problem solving skills, you are probably in silver, okay? Now, of course, there's a chance that if you're really big brain, you made it to gold, but chances are you're in silver, okay? So now the third step is to learn algorithms and data structures. Now you might be saying, Come on man, I am the best problem solver in the world. I don't need these nonsense algorithms. I could do it all myself. But no, you are wrong, okay? <laughs> Like you could have all the problem solving skills in the world, but you cannot fly with just your hands, okay? Only like jump off a cliff and call that flying, but I personally don't like dying at the bottom of the cliff, okay? <laughs> the point is you need algorithms in order to solve like silver and gold problems. Now the main reason that I would recommend for learning algorithms is of course use the code guide, right? They literally have pages for every single algorithm you'll need. Like let me just show you, they have <laughs> everything. So if you go to like silver, for example, you can see they got prefix sum, they got two pointers, so on and so forth. If you go to a more advanced thing, you can see at gold, you got like, DP, you got, what else do they got? Bradford search, disjoint set union. So if you want to literally learn all the algorithms that are applicable to the Usico in one place, Usico Guide is the place to do it. Now if somehow you come across an algorithm that isn't in Usico Guide, how is that even possible? You could use Geeks for Geeks. Like this thing has been there for a really long time and it's been <laughs> just getting more and more algorithms on it. So like, if it's missing in Usico Guide, it's guaranteed to be here, okay? Like you can see, there's literally everything you might want here. And for example, if you're searching up how to do Kruskal's algorithm, right? I can speak Kruskal's algorithm. And it gives you exactly how the algorithm works. And the best part is that it also gives you, where, wait for it, wait for it, the implementation. Very nice. Now, because I did not have Usico Guide when I was getting into Usico, I had to use Coursera in order to learn algorithms. And I think that was really good because they go way beyond the Usico curriculum. And I really enjoyed algorithms. I, I learned so much in those two classes. So if you're interested in going beyond Usico and you're just interested in CS in general, I definitely would do the Coursera courses as well. Now basically the two courses I went through fully is Algorithm by Stanford. That literally lets you use whatever language you want and all you got to do is get the right answer. And then there's Algorithm Part 1 and Part 2 from Princeton, which basically forces you to use Java, but it, it goes into a lot more depth and the programming assignments are a lot more complex. And finally, the last thing that I used and I think was really, really good is AlphaStar, right? It's a bit more expensive than the other options. All the other options are free, so like, yes, obviously it's more expensive. But the instructor I got, Fatih Galgi, was really, really nice. He was really, really good. He helped me learn BFS, DFS. Like, he literally taught me all the algorithms I needed to go from silver to gold. Now, just one last thing to mention about algorithms is that they're not just useful in being tools that help you not jump off cliffs somehow. They're also really helpful in the way that they show you what can be done with CS, right? And they also show how you can be clever in order to make things faster. And that's literally the whole point of use ago. So even if you come across a problem that isn't exactly the algorithm that you learned about, you can still apply the ideas you learned about in that algorithm to this problem. Like you might be like, oh, that algorithm I learned about yesterday actually uses the property that sorted arrays. What happens if I sort this array? I wonder. And more often than not, use ago problems could be solved by sorting an array. So try it out. <laughs> Maybe it'll work. And now we are on the final step, grind problems. If you've completed the first three steps, you should be now in gold. But to get past gold, you do have to do a ton of problems. Like, obviously you should be doing this at every step of the way, but in gold, it's extremely important. That's because gold problems require a ton of problem solving skills and algorithms, right? So you need like a really good mix of the two and that only comes from doing problems. Now the way I would go about it is just by focusing on solving the problem theoretically, right? Because implementing like use go problems takes forever, right? 
And once you get the theoretical answer, then you check your answer with the solution, and if it's correct, then you implement it, right? Because then you don't waste time implementing a wrong solution. Also, another thing to mention is that if you're getting stuck on it for like more than an hour or two, then you should probably get a hint from the solution or ask like a uh, family member to look at the solution and give you a hint after. Now, of course, if you're confident in your coding skills, you don't have to do that many implementations of problems, but I would highly recommend it. It's good to practice your implementation before the contest because a lot of people struggle with implementation. A bunch of you guys were commenting, but Implementation, in my opinion, is the hardest part of you to go. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, but like, it is pretty hard, okay? And those are the basic steps that I use to get to Yusuko Plat. Of course, I didn't use some of the things I mentioned because they weren't available to me, like Yusuko Guide, but for the most part, that's exactly what I did. But anyways, I hope this video was helpful. Let me know if there's anything else you guys want to see from me. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you guys for watching again, and I will see you next time.